everyone. So we're just going to wait one or two more minutes, um, give people a chance to join, uh, and then we'll kick things off. Give everyone a chance to select the right virtual background that they uh, prefer the most. I feel really lame for not knowing how to do that right now. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of people have gone through this learning curve in the last uh, couple weeks. Um, if you go to settings, there's a virtual background tab, uh, and then you can <laughs> use one of their presets, um, or you can uh, insert your own image. That is beautiful. Thank you. Cello, uh, at Cello. I've been, yeah, I've been using this one sometimes. <laughs> Well, that's fine. Oh. I'll go back here. <laughs> the New York Times one is gold. Cool. Really? Yeah, why, is, why is that not an Ethereum.org background, Josh? Well, actually, I, you just gave me an idea. <laughs> 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 so give me uh, two seconds here, and then we'll be ready. Here we go. I can't see much though, because I'm in the way of it. Nice. Okay. All right, I think we're, we're probably ready to get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'll share my screen so we can kind of work through this document together. Um, and uh, I also posted a link in the chat, uh, which you should have already seen, uh, to like the Notion page for this. Um, so that's what we'll kind of be using for the agenda. Um, so to kick things off, um, yeah, thank you for taking the time to join. Um, we really appreciate it. I know people are busy. I know there's a lot else going on in the world right now. Um, we really appreciate the chance to get feedback from you and, and hear your ideas. Um, so I guess, first of all, who are we? Uh, my name is Josh. Um, my colleague Sam is also on the call. Um, and we are two people that work on Ethereum.org. Um, there's many more people that contribute. Um, I should also note that Taeyeon is on the call who manages the translation program which is broader than just ethereum.org, um, but is the program that we've kind of used to translate uh, lots of the site over the last several months. Um, so there's many other people as well that contribute to ethereum.org. We're not the only ones, um, but uh, we'll be the kind of ones you know, on the call today. Um, so what is the purpose of the call? The basic idea is that you know, we wanna make sure that we are finding ways to involve people, that we are you know, gathering feedback, that we are sharing our ideas and getting your responses to them. So every month or two, we're holding, holding these community calls. This is the second one we've ever done. Uh, we're continuing to iterate on them. Um, just a reminder, um, I mentioned this earlier, we are recording this call and the recording will be posted to YouTube afterwards. Um, so make sure you're okay with that. Um, uh, this was something that people requested when we got on the call last time. So um, that is kind of my introduction. Um, we're gonna go through a couple things. Um, you know, both Sam and Taeyeon have a bit of kind of like updates to give about recent changes and additions to the site. Um, and then we'll kind of open it up for discussion. We have one thing in particular we wanna get some feedback on, um, but if there's other things that you wanna talk about, um, suggestions you wanna make, you know, problems you wanna point out, we'll turn it over to you for most of the call. So um, quickly, two follow-ups from the last call. One is the recordings, I already mentioned that. The second is um, we talked last time about kind of sharing more of the research we did to define the user personas for ethereum.org. Um, and there's a link here in this document that again is in the chat um, to a memo that is just kind of a summary of our thoughts on this. So it is you know, a description of what the user personas are for ethereum.org in our view, uh, the research we did to kind of determine that um, and then, you know, some of the information that we've collected and that Sam has recently updated uh, with, with up-to-date figures. So if you're into this kind of thing, take a look. Um, might be interesting to you to kind of understand where we're coming from. If you see, you know, flaws in our analysis, things that you want to point out, things we could think about differently, you can just add a, a comment directly to the document um, uh, by kind of clicking on it in any, any content. So that's, uh, that's it for kind of my updates. Um, Sam and Tan, I'll let you guys kind of run through the, the next bits here. I'll, I'll jump in if I have any comments, but otherwise I'll leave it to you to kind of talk about what we've added to the site recently. Tan, you wanna kick it off?
Is she muted? Oh yeah, uh, you're, um, there we go. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Tan. I think this is the first time to introduce the translation program at the community call. Um, do we have time to explain how this works uh, brief, briefly, like before sharing the updates? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, yeah. So translation program is aiming to lower the language barrier within the Ethereum ecosystem. So our goal is to help community members of non-English speaking regions, including me, to learn Ethereum in their mother tongues. Our program is mainly led by the volunteers from all over the, all over the world. Uh, we are cooperating with each other by using the translation program uh, platform called Crowden. The process consists of three steps. First, translation. Second, review. Lastly, integration. So when the translation is completed, our professional review service provider will proofread the quality of translation and then our GitHub contributors will take over the final version to integrate into the Ethereum org. Yeah, which uh, takes about like a three to uh, three weeks and yeah, and more. So that's a brief intro introduction of the translation program. Uh, if anyone interested, please feel free to join us. We need more contributors now. And latest updates, um, yeah, so the last few weeks, we've finally added new language, Swedish and Indonesian, while German, Slovak, and Arabic have been upgraded into the latest version 1.1. Um, regarding the version update, I will explain shortly. Uh, additionally, Romanian, Turkish, and Arabic versions are done review. So we're expecting them to be online within one or two weeks. Uh, yeah, lastly, I will explain our new version management system. Yeah, uh, our website is getting more complex over the time by adding new contents and language. So yeah, we felt a need for introducing a version management system that can better track the different stage of each language. How does it work? Um, yeah, as you already have seen in the crowding, uh, we've created new folders with different version numbers, which simply divided into version 1.0 and version 1.1. Firstly, uh, version 1.0 is the very first version of the Ethereum org. Um, most existing languages are remaining at this stage, which indicates like a 48%. Yeah. Uh, version 1.1 is the latest version in Crowdin, which contains the latest contents on our current website. Mm. Where are we now? Uh, we are working towards version 1.1. Uh, in the near future, we'll add new contents for version 1.2. We'll probably include a recent updated community page and more. This version update will be conducted regularly um, and planned in the light of the overall progress of the translation in each language. Why do we need this? Um, yeah, uh, some of you sent the feedback to me. Um, the addition of the latest content has dropped the progress percentage significantly. Like some of them uh, drop in, uh, even drop in half, yeah, which is like 50%, yeah. So this radical change could potentially lower the motivation of a volunteer overall. And yeah, I thought it would confuse newcomers where to start. So by setting up different milestones, uh, I think our contributors can keep motivated and stay on track without feeling overwhelmed. Yeah, this is my site. Yeah, um, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or good feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Taeyun. Yeah, and I just dropped a couple links into this update section of the call notes. So if people are curious, 
particularly the page ethereum.org slash languages that provides a lot of info of not only just the progress of each translation if you're eager to follow along but ways to get involved such as like joining our slack um, workspace that's just dedicated for the translation program itself um, so if you want to get involved we encourage you to to check it out we'd love to have you um, in terms of my updates, um, so one big initiative we've been working on the past few months, um, if you were here for our first community call back in January, um, you heard me talk about this, but essentially rolling out a new design system on ethereum.org, um, which is composed of two main elements, one being design principles, and I linked to that again in the call notes, but that's really just a brief document outlining like what are, what is the guiding compass of ethereum.org's design. And the purpose here is to really like give a common ground for the ethereum.org team and the community at large who may wanna make a contribution of just like what are, again, yeah, these guiding principles that can help us make decisions, um, any design decision, any new page or feature is ultimately going to come with trade-offs. How do we make decisions um, trying to take those trade-offs into account? Um, it'll always be a work in progress. So if you guys have feedback about it, you know, feel free to hit us up on Twitter, open an issue, um, whatever's more approachable for you. Definitely looking to continue to get feedback there. Um, the second piece, the design system is really just like the design itself. Um, so we worked with a couple um, designers in the community to build a style guide in Figma. And over the past month, we've been working with one designer in particular to actually implement that style guide. Um, and what we're hoping this will give is just a lot more consistency to the site. Um, hopefully a better user experience overall, um, as well as just like reusable components that again, if any contributor wants to say, create a new page on the site, they have like this toolkit to work with. Um, and that's like, I'd say 90% complete. We should be finished with that. Um, at least the first iteration of that by the end of the month, uh, which is pretty exciting. So again, open to feedback on all this stuff. Uh, but that's one major focus we've been pushing on. What I else do we note, have? I should just note too, Sam, that a lot of these changes are already live on the site. So if you are familiar with the site, you'll notice that a lot of this has actually changed recently uh, in terms of how the links work, the styling, the footer, things like that. Um, layout changes are coming next to a lot of these pages, um, but many of these things are live already. Right. And a big piece of this, yeah, just to reiterate, like with our design principle of just like modularity of, you know, over the past nine months, the content on the site maybe hasn't changed too significantly, but we're hoping these design rollouts can get us in a place where it's much easier to add additional content. And I think something we can discuss is like that will be a focus. Um, for our team for the remainder of the year of just like, now that the site's in a good place where it is modular and scalable, um, we can really start to add a lot more content um, that the community finds useful. Any questions on that before I move on? Feel free to send something in the chat. Um, but content, what I just brought up, Another piece we've been working on is just, I mean, the ethereum.org team, as you can see, is pretty small. Um, and we have our own blind spots, right? Like we have our own perspective and experience um, and knowledge of Ethereum. But one thing we know for sure is like, we do not know everything and we do not know what is best for ethereum.org. So, an initiative we kicked off at the beginning of this year was recruiting what we called a tiger team. 
um, of people, domain experts, community members within the Ethereum space um, who could give us feedback um, and propose new initiatives specific to content. And what we did was essentially worked with a handful of individuals to take on one persona of ethereum.org and that was the individual's persona. So if you think like the, what is Ethereum page, um, the wallets page, the dApps page, um, and just trying to collect a lot of diverse feedback about, hey, what is this page trying to solve? Does it solve it? What on the page should change? Um, what gaps are there? Um, and we get a lot of good feedback from that first content audit that we're really right now in the process of just kind of synthesizing and turning into concrete action items, which you'll see reflected as GitHub issues pretty soon. And all that to kind of rally for if there are any like developers on the call or people who are particularly interested in developer relations or developer education, our next step is really going to be focusing on all developer specific content on ethereum.org and how we can improve the existing content, remove content that's not useful and add new content where there are just like gaps out in the community of, hey, there's this one topic area or specific tooling that really doesn't have much documentation or information about it. Um, so we are accepting applications now. You can see the link in the call notes. If you have any interest in getting involved with that, um, I would love to chat with you. It's just a brief survey, just kind of getting a gist of, you know, what is your experience with software development, Ethereum software development specifically, um, and areas you might be interested in helping out with. Um, so if you, again, yeah, are interested or know someone, who might be interested in doing this. Um, yeah, we'd love to love to get you involved. So just a quick question regarding user personas and how you guys see the content audits going moving forward. Where do roles such as business, marketing, design kind of lay within those two personas of individuals and developers at this point? It's a good question. Say, yeah, I, I would say um, it's a bit of both, right? So for example, Let's say you have a person who has a background in marketing, um, but you know doesn't work in the field yet. Is might be relatively new to Ethereum. Um, I would expect that user to be covered by individuals, and they might be interested in, for example, going to the Ethereum community page, and then going to you know this section on how I can get involved, and reading about how you know if I have marketing skills, I can do things here too. Right? We kind of have a path for that. Um, on the other hand, maybe a designer who you know, maybe already works in the space, um, is more familiar, maybe they have a technical question because they are, they work in a technical field, they might be well served by, you know, checking out Ethereum Studio um, to understand how like, you know, the front end of their design might interact with a smart contract. Um, they might be interested in, you know, going to kind of other starting tools um, served by this page. So I'd say it kind of depends uh, a little bit on, on who it is, but for the most part, I'd say that they're served by the individuals or the developers user persona. Does that make sense, Akil? I'm not sure if I answered your question um, completely. Uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out like what's the, because we have clear flows for both the individuals and for developers. I'm wondering if there's a way to guide the learning for those individuals in a more frame manner if, if, if possible. I don't know if it's even possible. I, I see there's like a UI, UX area kind of buried on the developer's side of things. Um, right. If right. we could surface that better somehow so people know that the resources exist. Um, yeah, that's I guess a good point. Need, need to be a little bit more thinking around that. Yeah, I think yeah, one, it's... so go, go ahead, Sam, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, it, I think it's a great question. It's something we've talked a lot about because ultimately we know the personas we have right now are imperfect, right? Like even for 
a developer, you know, they might be involved in enterprise and they're also probably an individual. So it can create some confusion no matter who you are of like where exactly to go. Um, ultimately, we decided to just go with something and we went with these three simple personas. What we've talked a lot about doing in the future and as we continue to develop content is just having like subcategories within each. Um, for instance, on like the what is Ethereum page, right now we just have one blanket explanation of what is Ethereum. But we all know Ethereum is multifaceted. It means different things to different people and it appeals to different people in different ways. So we've thought about, you know, adding additional subsections of like, you know, are you a marketer? Like learning how this applies to you. Are you a lawyer? Um, so I feel like there definitely are ways where we can get more granular about this. Um, and I think that's a big reason like we tried to publish the user persona research is because one, we're hoping it might be useful to other projects in the space, but two is like, we know there's blind spots within it that we would love feedback and ideas on. So yeah, if like, if you come up with an idea of like, Hey, this website is nice, but it's really not catered to product managers or designers at all. Like in terms of tools for them to learn, communities for them to get involved in, um, even raising the question is helpful for us. Um, Cause right now we're just using our best judgment in terms of what to focus on. Sounds good. Okay, so I think next up, Sam was just the note about studio simplification and then the Bitcoin bounties. Right, right, right. Thanks. Um, so Ethereum Studio, you folks may be familiar with. Um, if you explore the developer's resources at all, you'll probably see some call outs to it. Um, the goal of this project is really just to give someone a quick idea of like the Ethereum stack in you know five to 50 minutes, if you will, depending on how much time they wanna spend poking around. Um, but it's meant to provide, you know, like a code sandbox like feel, hopefully something an existing software developer is familiar with and can get a quick concept up and running. Um, so we have a couple like template projects that people can explore um, ways to compile and actually deploy their contract and interact with their DAP in this like preview browser. So we released that late last year. Um, and since then I've gotten a lot of helpful feedback from folks. And what we've been really doing is just trying to like trim out a lot of the features actually, and just make the UI as simple as possible, just because it can be a lot for even an experienced developer to kind of hop in and see all these different pieces and how they interact. Um, so yeah, again, just continuing to iterate on this, try to simplify it. Um, I linked to the GitHub of this project. If you guys do have ideas, um, one thing we want to do in the coming future is run some sort of competition around different templates that can, you know, demonstrate the value of Ethereum and like why it's unique and valuable. Um, so stay tuned for that stuff. And lastly, related to that, um, just keep up on the radar for you folks. If you are developers, um, we will be releasing a bunch of Gitcoin bounties within the next few weeks. Um, over the past six months, I'd say we ran some very small experience, uh, experiments, maybe like 20 bounties for a total of like $3,000. Um, but we had like really good success and engagement with that in terms of just people hopping in, opening pull requests, closing issues. Um, so right now we're going through a process, getting approval with the Ethereum Foundation to like set up a much more streamlined flow where we can really try to uh, scale up our bounty program. And 
yeah, again, if you're considering different ways of getting involved, I think that's an awesome way just to, you know, build up your GitHub resume, make some money in your free time, um, and obviously get to contribute to open source, which hopefully people find exciting. Um, that's it in terms of updates on my end. Cool, thanks, Sam. Um, so this is the part where we turn it over to you. Um, you know, like I said, I've got kind of one question I, I was gonna ask, but maybe we'll first just see if anyone has any like burning issues that they wanna talk about. Um, anything that, you know, ideas they have, you know, things they came here to complain about, like, you know, stuff that could be better, um, you know, please, uh, the floor is open. So I guess I, I'll get started again. I actually had a very Go for uh, <laughs> niche uh, issue. I'm doing research in regards to E2, um, UX and uh, the initial indications we got from the community were like 35% of the people still look to the Ethereum Foundation for all their information. So I'm just wondering what's in the pipelines as far as getting E2 information onto the website, and especially with things such as the uh, deposit ceremony, there's gonna be a lot of issues with phishing attempts um, and other security concerns. So I think we need some sort of source of truth for individuals to go to, to learn about E2 and how to kind of get onboarded when you know, it does the phase or it does go live in the next few months. Um, so I'm wondering if there's anything in the plans for that. Um, so the short answer, oh, I guess there's a couple things on this. Um, one is that, so there's an important distinction between ethereum.org and the Ethereum Foundation. Um, obviously some people that work for or work on ethereum.org like myself and like Sam work for the Ethereum Foundation. But really ethereum.org is just like a website that is built by many people in the community about Ethereum. So it is, should not be considered like the kind of like, you know, official communication channel um, of the foundation. Um, that more is, is the blog, like the blog is kind of the source of, you know, all of these, um, you know, ETH2 short updates that Danny and others have been writing this is kind of the official communication channel um, for anything coming out of the foundation. So that is probably more likely where you're gonna see that kind of thing. Um, in, so let me, that's the kind of the preface. Um, in terms of ethereum.org, ETH2 stuff specifically, um, you know, right now we have some resources on the site about this, but there's no sort of kind of dedicated page. That is something I would like to change in the coming months, you know, as, you know, the next kind of phase goes live, there's going to be more attention on this. People are going to have more questions. I think there ought to be a dedicated ETH2 page uh, on the site. The content for that just doesn't exist yet. Um, and the people, you know, with the knowledge to create it um, are kind of busy getting us to that milestone. So it is in the pipeline um, and we could certainly raise the priority of that, but it is not, you know, um, coming up immediately next. Um, in terms of how, you know, the foundation and the R&D teams working on ETH2 should communicate about things like the deposit ceremony. Um, I'm not sure, we, we can definitely talk about that now and I, and I love to, to hear your insights about it, Akil, um, but it's not something that the ethereum.org team has thought about specifically. Does that answer your question? I'll make sure I'm not kind of skipping over anything important there. Yeah, that's. I think the clarification between the community aspect of it and uh, the blog is, uh, quite important and then making sure that we highlight those blog posts within the context of the, the .org site is I think probably the best way forward for that. Um, yeah. Just a way for people to surface that information faster in a more linear fashion, I suppose. Yeah, uh, but I, I definitely agree that there needs to be kind of clear communication around these things and make sure that there is, you know, good information out there about it and that we minimize the risks uh, that you mentioned. Yeah, Akil, so I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's a page that probably should exist. Um, I feel like we can definitely do a better job of just empowering people to help make that happen too. Like after this call, I'll create an issue to like generate a discussion for an ETH 2.0 page. Um, but I, I guess I just want to say like, 
anyone does have the power to potentially do that of create an issue on the GitHub repo, say like, hey, I think this is a page that should exist. Maybe here's a couple resources or newsletters or blog posts that I think should be included on the page. Um, and that would really help to kickstart the discussion um, and make it happen. I would say like one thing, we just don't have a dedicated, like say content writer or curator on the site right now. Um, but we do have people in the community helping out with that. Um, I can give you one example from this week, just uh, hopping in an EIP IP meeting. Um, and we talked about just like the lack or like the gap of knowledge for a lot of people of there's really no introduction to the Ethereum improvement proposals and how that process works. Um, so someone volunteered to write an introduction page um, that hopefully will get included on ethereum.org. So I think that just goes to show like people can make it happen if there is a need for that type of content. And like you say, people do look to ethereum.org as a trusted source information. Um, and then we can make the decision from there, hey, does this make sense? Or should we just you know, throw a couple links out to these other trusted sources and direct people there um, if the information is already available elsewhere? Great, so in that regard, you just mentioned that you guys don't have um, a copywriter, are you, does Ethereum.org produce any content at this point, or is it usually just all external? We do. So I'd mix. say, Josh, you could definitely answer better. Yeah, I'd say the short is it's a mix of people who help yeah. out. <laughs> um, I mean, so, you know, parts of the site are really, you know, just a portal to other content, right? So if you look at like the developer resources page, that is mostly, you know, summaries and links to outside content. Um, some of the parts of the site do have more written content, like the, uh, you know, what is Ethereum page is kind of a blog post. Um, you know, some of the other pages, like the page is about like dApps and ETH have some content. We're, we're going to be expanding that um, after the like content audit that Sam mentioned. Um, so there, there is a need for that. Um, anyone that's interested in contributing copy to Ethereum.org, um, definitely like get in touch with me. I'd love to chat with you and, and hear what you're interested in doing. Um, we do also rely on, you know, community contributions. Um, you, I mean, you can go back and kind of look for the GitHub history, but lots of people have, you know, submitted changes of wording to certain pages. Um, we have asked people to submit, you know, what is the right way to explain this concept? And that's made it into kind of parts of the site. So it is kind of a, 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 a combination of, of many different sources. Um, it's a bit like, I mean, to be clear, like, it's not like there's going to be kind of a, the way you normally think of like a content copywriter who is like, you know, constantly just producing blog posts. Like that's not the goal. The goal is that, you know, the content that is on the site is great. Um, and that it can reflect what's needed and that we have the capability to add the new pages we need to add and, you know, add the content we have to add. So in any case, if anyone's interested in, in, in doing that, definitely get in touch with me and I'd love to, to hear more about it. Okay. Um, anyone else have kind of a, a, an idea, a question, something they came here to say, um, floor, floors open. Okay. Well, uh, I can kick it off with, so um, I mentioned that I had kind of one issue that we were trying to think our way through and maybe this group can help us do that. Um, one kind of, so uh, if you're looking at the shared screen that I've got here, let me just pull an example up. Um, um, so one kind of recurring challenge we have across the site um, is the following. We have pages like Ethereum wallets and we list some wallets on this page. Um, and a big question is what wallets ought to go here? Um, one thing that happens is, you know, um, people will submit PRs with, you know, the wallet that they've just launched. Uh, that might not have any users, and maybe it's a great wallet, but you know, how do we decide um, what goes on this page and, and what doesn't? So far, we've relied on you know asking people in the community, um, asking people who have a lot of experience, thinking about kind of wallets and user experience, 
Um, we're definitely making some changes to this list um, following the content audit that Sam mentioned, but it's a recurring question. You know, in a way, this is kind of a governance question. Who gets to decide what get listed here? Um, it shouldn't be everything, um, but you know, there should be a circle of people that can contribute to this. Um, you know, we have a similar question with the uh, use Ethereum page, which lists some applications. We are going to be changing this list, but there's still a persistent question of how do we decide what goes on here? Um, how do we make sure that we're not sending people to a really bad application that's going to leave them with a bad experience if it was their first time ever using Ethereum? But we also want to make sure that we're, you know, bringing attention to good stuff that comes out of the community. So this is a, a, a challenge that we're wrestling with right now and, and that we're thinking about different solutions to. Um, and I'd love to know if anyone on this call has any thoughts about the right way to do that, um, you know, things to avoid, things not to do, good ideas you have. Um, open floor again to, to share your thoughts on this. Yeah, just um, really quickly, I mean, this is an idea that just came to my mind. Um, I, I just wrote it in the chat, but if there's a publicly available set of criteria for wallets to feature and, and for other sorts of um, tools that you guys feature on Ethereum.org, then I think that could be really helpful. And I mean, that criteria can be obviously constantly updated and people can add to that set of criteria. But I think if the community can come to an agreement on like, what do we want in like, a really awesome wallet like what do we look for like as a cult like you know kind of collective group of people then that's like one way to judge wallets you guys can feature because otherwise it would just that list would get way too long and be a little bit unhelpful right right uh do you have any opinions about what those criteria ought to be yeah i i, just, I put in the chat i think like number of users privacy guarantees are super important i think like maybe dividing like i mean for the wallet um example like dividing up kind of wallets that are like custodial wallets and um wallets that you know are maybe more um can guarantee an anonymity um I, you know just kind of thinking about like the norms that the ethereum community kind of um takes into account and like dividing that list of wallets up against those norms but i don't know that's just my preference <laughs> just to build on the criteria side of things um there's a few um Google Sheets that exist where people are trying to solve this problem already. So one's kind of led by um, Billy, right? Billy, and then there's a few others that just popped up. Um, so we've been kind of looking at seeing what's the best way to do that. So one of the suggestions was having at least like a top five type situation suggestion for new users that come into the ecosystem. And that's based on an aggregate of all the different criteria that are there and then you can choose how you want to weigh them. Um, but that gets a bit more complicated. So I think once those those resources are out, you can probably plug into them and not have to do that work yourself. Um, but it could be an option. Do you know where I can find those? I, I do remember seeing the one that uh, Billy shared on Twitter. Um, but are there like, where would I go to find these other ones? Um, I'll have to, I'll paste them in the notion and okay. then go from there. Cool. Um, and just noting that Sam added to the note document here that there is an issue already um, about um, this. I think this, this already existed, right, Sam? Yeah, from February about kind of what these criteria should be. So if anyone has other thoughts, like feel free to jump into this issue and, and, and add things. Um, maybe we'll even take the notes from the discussion here that like Helena suggested, for example. Um, and kind of paste them into this conversation. Oh, thanks, Martin. Um, okay, so that's, you know, that's kind of one, that's the wallet side of things. Um, another is obviously how to think about, you know, what dApps go up here. And maybe another way of attacking this and getting your feedback would be to say, um, you know, from your perspective, like, what are the kinds of applications that we should be sharing with someone who's new to Ethereum, right? Because, you know, this, this page is really about someone who's pretty new to this and they're excited by what they've read and what they've heard about Ethereum and they go here and they're like, cool, I want to use it. Um, and we want to, you know, kind of give them some sort of experience that, you know, is positive, that is inspiring, that, you know, they, they have like a, an impact on or has an impact on them. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on like, you know, how we should think about that? Like, what is the ideal experience 
um, of, of, of starting to do that? And maybe what are the non-ideal experiences we should try and avoid? No opinions, none at all. <laughs> uh, Sam, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it's something we've talked about. It's it's definitely a tricky situation. Like, I think for one, similar to the wallet curation we were just talking about, is like there needs to be hopefully some sort of quality threshold of like, hey, you need to meet this certain bar. I don't know what the right objective measures are in terms of like number of users or, you know, amount of value transacted. But the last thing we do, last thing we want is to show an application that someone goes in, doesn't understand, potentially gets scammed or loses money somehow, right? Um, so there's that minimum threshold of like security and usability. Um, but to your point, I think, there are just like tiers of experience with mm -hmm. the Ethereum eco ecosystem broadly and potentially just like financial literacy um, that are worth taking into account. Um, so one thing we've talked about doing, you know, is like creating at least at like a very simple type like app store experience where we can at least like categorize certain applications that could let the user pick their own journey like maybe they just want to play a very simple game where they can learn like oh here's how you can um you know like play a lottery um versus like here's some you know set protocol have a basket of different investments like that is much more geared towards someone who understands, you know, portfolio management at a high level. Um, so it's a tricky question because we do see such a broad range of experience, but it is mostly new people who even them may have completely different backgrounds when it comes to finance or legal or environmental stuff. Um, so yeah, it's something we we'd love input on from folks. I would think um, you could take some guidance from the keyword that people search for. So if people are searching for stable coins, perhaps you surface those dApps a bit higher than let's say I'm looking at the list here. Um, Ethereum dApps and Ethereum games only get like six thousand searches per month, whereas um, something like stable coins get 70,000. Uh, so perhaps you guys could do some more further analysis on what kind of resources or links feed into the content for ethereum.org right now and then go accordingly to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's I think that's point. a great idea. I wouldn't want to read too much into that, I guess just because um, I I mean, this is, this is a hypothesis, but I, I think that probably a lot of people that end up on this page who can most benefit for from it don't even know what to search for, right? Like they might not even understand that there are such things as Ethereum games. And so they're not searching for it. Um, they like don't even know what questions to ask when they get to this page. And so I wouldn't want to read too much into the search volume because I expect the search volume is an indicator of what people know once they know more, but not necessarily the kind of user we're looking for here. I'm not sure if that's right, but it's kind of a, a, a thought that I had about kind of avoiding reading too much into this. Sam, you can tell me if that's totally wrong based on your experience. Uh, Sam has a lot of no. in this kind of thing. Actually, that's fair, right? Is like to give context to everybody. I mean, the large majority of search volume around Ethereum is for its like head terms like Ethereum. What is Ethereum? What's an Ethereum wallet? Um, but you do get a lot of targeted search volume, as Akil mentioned, for stable coins or DeFi or specific projects in that space, which you kind of do have to make some level of assumption of just like what is the intent or level of understanding. But I would say people searching for Ethereum stable coins probably have a pretty good sense of what Ethereum is 
and aren't exactly the people coming from the what is Ethereum page to learn about dApps. So that's a challenge we face, but I think Akil, you do bring up a good point of like, we can start with the, the high keyword search volume and at least give that as an option for people to learn more about. Um, we've talked a lot about creating, you know, industry pages or application pages, um, use cases, whatever you want to call it, where we do explain, hey, here's some concrete, tangible examples of like what people are building on Ethereum and what it is used for. Um, so again, going back to that like app store analogy, if gaming or finance is a category, that could give us a way to start to explain those concepts, whether you are a newcomer or whether you came here specifically looking for that topic. Uh, so I'm just noting, so in the chat, uh, James suggested, um, um, you know, one way we could maybe solve part of this problem is as part of some of the kind of risks you mentioned, Sam, would be to have um, applications listed here that are um, uh, built on testnet. And so we can kind of more easily send them mm -hmm. to a faucet to get testnet ETH and then they don't have to, like the, the bar is a bit lower to do that. Um, I don't know if you have any, any thoughts on, on that. Or James, if you want to kind of add to that picture, feel free. Yeah, I mean, I like that a lot personally. I think anytime we can start with a sandbox environment, get people comfortable with the tools, um, if it is MetaMask or whatever other wallet this person's using and installing, not having to actually go through a KYC process to acquire ETH in order to participate, um, but instead just go to a faucet website to get some tokens. Um, to me, yeah, that's like a much lower barrier to onboarding someone and less risk <laughs> overall. Um, so yeah, I like that idea a lot. I'm, I'm just curious. I really don't even know like how many applications out there have, you know, test net experiences for them, such as, you know, pool together or various other ones, but that's something I'll definitely look into after. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. That's kind of my concern too, is that the the user experience in other ways of a test net app might be a lot worse because people are probably not gonna put the same resources into it as they're going to put into their actual mainnet uh, release. Um, and also that some of the test net faucets are just literally broken and, and don't work half the time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think the other consideration is just the trade-off of more education of what is a test net way yeah. there's multiple different universes where ethereum lives parallel to each other um there is risk of overwhelm in that sense but mm. maybe it is worth the benefit if you can get someone up and running in a quicker low risk environment okay uh, and just noting uh, gabrielle added some suggestions in here too about um uh, I'm not familiar with dap.ps, um, but a couple links that I'll check out later. So Gabrielle, thank you for sharing those. Uh, and you added the repo too. Oh yeah, Andy's thing, okay. From status, cool. Um, okay, I mean, we're coming to the close to the end of the time. Um, anyone else have any kind of thoughts, ideas, criticisms, suggestions, um, anything at all that you'd like to share and immemorialize uh, in this YouTube video? <laughs> Otherwise, we can call it there. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Pooja from the Cat Hurdles team. Uh, this website, ethereum.org, is really helpful for the newcomer. The Cat Hurdles teams are also trying to help out the newcomers coming up to the Ethereum community to kind of point out to the right uh, place where they can contribute in a way. And I'm hoping to uh, work with you guys to, you know, kind of update more of more uh, contents to it, which may be frequently asked question type of thing that we are receiving from our, uh, receiving mm -hmm. at our end. 
would be sharing that with the you people and hopefully it would be helpful to make this website more usable for newcomers. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, feel free to send us a message after. I, what, what's the name of the organization or, or the, the, the website you mentioned? Uh, we are a group of Ethereum cat herders. Basically, we Oh, cat herders. Yeah, of course. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, Great. we are trying to, we are trying to, uh, you know, kind of uh, create a environment for newcomers. We are in, already inviting everybody who wants to ask a question. Please feel free to reach out to us at the Gitter. And uh, we'll try to come up with some FAQ questions that we are already getting from the community with you, you people. Sam, I already know you and Josh, I know you now. So yeah. Yeah, please, please share. Um, yeah, that'd be great. This, for everyone's context too, um, you know, the, the new community page um, was a product of many people contributing in, including I think multiple people from the cat herders. Um, so, I mean, thank you again for helping kind of get that content up, up, up to date. Um, so yeah, as soon as you have um, things to share, we'd love to kind of, you know, try and collaborate and, and use content that you have already to improve the website. Sure, thank you. Cool. Okay, anything else, anybody? Otherwise, happy to call it there and say goodbye till next time. Um, hi, uh, this is Harif. Uh, yes, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, sorry, I, I came in uh, a bit late, so I'm sh sure I lost a lot of context here. No, uh, no, no but, problem. <laughs> uh, but sort of two, two uh, angles where I'm coming from is, um, so uh, I work uh, as community at Etherscan, and we have a lot of um, user emails, and a lot of them are sort of newer-ish uh, kind of people. Uh, and um, just throwing it out there, such that if there's any way we can um, sort of lead them to um, the resources that you guys have mentioned, uh, that would be um, that that's something that that Etherscan can offer. Um, oh, that'd be separate. great. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, separately, uh, so I'm, I'm an organizer of one of the Ethereum meetups. Uh, mine is in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, so we've been running it for about uh, kind of two years now. Uh, and so there's, there's been thoughts that we've had around how uh, meetups can help uh, onboard people uh, from their local areas. Uh, and um, so, so uh, there's two sides to that. Uh, one is how to help keep the meetups uh, sustainable without sort of relying on, on handouts or, or, or sponsors. Uh, and at the same time, um, if we can come up with like a project that is uh, coordinated between the various uh, meetup organizers um, with, with uh, east.org as a kind of uh, like a template provider uh, in a way so that there is a consistency between um, the different um, sort of local chapters, if you can call them that. Um, yeah, it's, it, so there can be sort of projects that, that we do around that and kind of like what you guys mentioned, there's, if there's a realness uh, to it um, and with the, with the added sort of angle of having a, a, a local person to, to help you out, uh, it might uh, sort of help get people uh, more interested. Yeah, definitely. Um, I should mention I, too, so um, Harith, do you know, our, is your meetup, so we have this page, right, community, and we yeah, yeah, a yeah. bunch of meetups. Uh, is, it, is it on there? Yep, yep. Oh, great, okay. Don't see it, but. Um, uh, it's Malaysia, I think. Oh, excellent. Okay. It's not KL. Yeah. Cool. I just yeah. want to make sure that you're already on there. Um, well, cool. And I should also mention, I, I think um, maybe we can connect afterwards, but I know that there's some work starting to be done um, uh, by so a few people in the Ethereum Foundation in terms of just trying to kind of map out the uh, meetup ecosystem uh, and understand it better and, you know, maybe kind of do some of the, you know, support and, and coordination activities you mentioned. Um, so maybe let's message afterwards and I can figure out um, who's doing that right now and, and connect them to you. Because it sounds like there might, you might already have some ideas that, that they could benefit from. Um, yeah. And in terms of, you know, how to kind of use your, your user base, your mailing list to kind of help promote content, um, definitely something we, we'd love to have help with. 
um, are most of your users um, developers or I, I mean like what is the kind of the demographic like would they benefit from you know for example a blurb about ethereum studio and you know the kind of getting started resources on ethereum.org um, would that be like something that's beneficial for your audience um so a, a, a breakdown of uh the users would be um roughly like half are considering themselves as super like normal users uh so like very basic uh, stuff and maybe a quarter uh would say they're developers Well, great. I mean, maybe Sam and I can go in and think about this, but um, we'd be very happy to, um, you know, maybe add a, write a, a short little blurb or, you know, some links that we think are, you know, the best starting point for uh, a totally new person who's not a developer, uh, as well as a link about, you know, where developers can get started. Um, I think that'd be very helpful. Yeah, Harith, I would just add, I mean, similar to how Pooja, thank you for, um, offering to share just like frequently asked questions but if there are like continuous questions that you get um maybe you guys just don't have the bandwidth to you know like add to your knowledge base whatever that question may be we'd love to know because you guys are the ones on the front lines interacting with a lot of users and their struggles or just their gaps in information um so if there's like pages we should be creating that just don't exist out there um, we definitely love to hear from you in terms of like where we could help out. Sure, I'll get in um, touch with you. Uh, yeah, so uh, we, we do get a lot of support tickets. I will double check with the um, support team uh, and I, I can let you know uh, what are some sort of Ethereum questions that, that are uh, always asked. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. I'd be very interested to see the, the support ticket for Etherscan. I'm sure that you do a, a very high volume of those, uh, providing such an essential service. Cool. Okay, Thanks. Um, we're at time, everybody. So I think we'll call it there. Uh, thank you again for joining. We really appreciate it. Um, and hope to see some of you on the next community call as well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Stay safe, stay sane. See you Bye. next time. <laughs> Cheers.